Hi everyone, I'm Michael with Georgia Firing Line. Today we're talking about how I turn five pound rifles into 20 pound rifles. Today we're talking about my Sig Spear. So I've been interested in the MCX platform for a very, very long time. When they first got released about the 2015, 2016 timeframe, new rifle, new platform, kind of wanted to wait it out, see what Sig was going to do with them, you know, get some reliability testing done on them. I didn't like Keymod. Keymod kind of sucks. They had the Gen 2s come out, the Vertices. Big improvement. They had an M-Lock rail. That was a big step in the right direction. And then Sig released this, the Gen 3 MCXs, the Sig Spears. They slimmed out the rail, got rid of that weight, kept my favorite M-Lock features, added back the AR-15 triggers, and this, this was the rifle for me. So I finally took the time and went out and got one, and I've got it set up here. So we're going to start at the tip, work our way all the way back to the butt, and I'm going to explain to you why I've added so much weight to this rifle. At the front here, we've got a Surefire SOCOM 5.56 RC2. It's the gold standard for suppressors these days. It does everything pretty well while still being extremely durable, great for flash suppression, good for all my night vision accessories, all my nighttime fun time and LARPing in mom's basement. Moving our way backwards, we'll end up with my light setup. So I've got a white light down here. It's a mod light head with an air socket body and a Surefire tail cap. Great thing about Surefire Scout lights is it's all compatible with each other. So the mod lights, the air socket bodies, the Surefire tail caps, you can kind of swap them all any which way you please. And this is just the setup I've ended up with. Right above it sits a mall. That is a night vision, an IR laser, illuminator, and invisible laser. For all of our nighttime needs, the reason why I went with the mall is because it's just hands down the best device on the market is a new style of laser illuminator that's called a visual illuminator. So instead of being just a standard LED in the IR spectrum, it actually uses lasers for your illumination. So it allows you to get around a lot of those FDA regulations about how powerful illuminators can be and gives you a lot more reach and throw with your illuminator, which is a very, very nice thing to have. As fun as it is for some of those full power devices with your, your lasers to be a, a lightsaber, I'm not calling a JDM from 30,000 feet. The full power laser doesn't do it for me, but the illuminator is really where it's at in the civilian world. Perched on the bottom here, I've got a BCM gunfighter grip. It's just a, a nice little vertical grip. Gives me a nice little uh, handhold to hit all my laser buttons. Perched atop the rifle is an EUTEC EXPS3. It's part of EUTEC's professional lineup. It's their higher waterproof. It's with their QD mount system. And it's also their night vision compatible optic. So it's got a nice little button on the side for all of your night vision needs. And contrary to what some people say on the internet, that button does not turn the optic into a night vision optic. The button's there so it dims down your reticle. So then your tubes can actually pick it up and doesn't actually blow out your tubes and you know make it so you can still see your target. The EUTEC is mounted on a Unity fast riser, so it gets the optic up a little bit, allows me to have a more upright head position for all my night vision shooting. So when you've got all that stuff in front of your face, which is like adding weight to things, it's okay. You actually keep your head more upright, stops it from all dragging you down to the side. Really helps out with that. It's just a more comfortable shooting position as well. Also allows it to work with the Unity magnifier system. So instead of having that big bulbous tumor hanging off the side of your rifle, when the magnifier is not being used, it actually keeps it stowed center line down below. And then with just a press of a button, flicks it right up. The actual magnifier I've got mounted in it is the SIG Juliet 3 Micro. It's just the magnifier I've ended up preferring over the years after comparing almost all of them to each other. It's just the one that's ended up on my rifle. Not to mention it's by far and away the cheapest and has probably the clearest glass in my opinion. It's a better mag, it's weird. I hate that it's a better magnifier. Only thing I've changed inside the rifle has been the trigger. I've added one of the Geisley SDE triggers. That's just the trigger I've standardized on. It's Geisley's flat face version of their uh, SSAE trigger because that's the trigger I use on everything. It's a trigger I've learned how to shoot fast. I do, I like how they break. Know how, I know how they break, I can run them fast. So I've just standardized to that trigger on all of my rifles. So I have the same trigger pull every time I shoot. On the back here, I've got SIG's folding telescoping stock. So you get three positions of adjustability. All the way in, all the way out, and in the middle. And the stock will also fold off the side, makes for easy storage and transportation. I built this rifle because I wanted an all-purpose do-anything gun. A gun that can go anywhere, do anything, is going to be successful. Whether it be one of our open range night events, that we've got one coming up March 9th, two guns at night, or just any kind of general purpose daytime or nighttime shooting that I want to do, I want a rifle that could handle anything I throw at it. And that's why I went with Spear. With the piston-driven system, which makes it a little bit more reliable, uh, a little bit better for suppressor use, a little bit less gas in my face. Being short, easy to maneuver, makes it really, really comfortable to be able to use with a plate carrier inside a vehicle, outside a vehicle, transitioning between the two. It just, it does a lot of things for me. It's also ended up becoming my dedicated home defense rifle, so it sits on my bedside whenever I'm at home. Once I picked the rifle up, it quickly became the only thing I really wanted to shoot. They're just extremely soft to shoot. There's not a whole lot of gas in your face, helped by that piston system there. Once you add 10 pounds of stuff to it, there's really no felt recoil at all. It just stays nice and smooth and level and it's really easy to get for those follow-up shots. And they just, they look awesome. And we all know looking good is 90% of the battle. Another main reason to pick up this rifle in my mind is the modularity of it. 
So right now I've got it set up as an 11 inch or 11 half inch 556. I can go get a barrel from SIG, swap it out to 300 blackout or 762 by 39 and a whole bunch of different barrel lengths, anything down from a six and three quarter up to a full 16. It allows me all these options without having to actually go out and purchase a new rifle, buy a new receiver set, have to go build it. They're super easy to swap. All it is is the two bolts here, your entire rail comes off, you got two bolts holding that barrel in, undo them, your whole assembly comes out, you put your new assembly in, put it all back together, got a whole new rifle without actually having to change anything. This really has become my jack of all trades rifle. Whenever I have to go do something, this is the rifle I gravitate towards over my knights, over my guys lose over my AKs. Whenever I have to do anything, night vision, a competition, just general home defense stuff, or just having fun on the range, this is the rifle I grab. So if you're interested in picking up a Sig Spear for yourself, or you have any questions about any night vision, other rifles, just anything at all, reach out to us on our socials below. We're more than happy to help you out. My name is Michael, and y'all have a good one.